Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we shall talk about the coronavirus vaccine and what are the clinical trials. And some countries have completed their clinical trials. This country is in clinical trial four, phase one, phase two. So what are these phases actually? So that's what we're going to talk in this video. So any drug, any drug which is being produced or any vaccine which has been produced has to go under preclinical trial and a clinical trial. So what is a preclinical trial? Preclinical trial means this trial, this test is done in animals, whereas clinical trial means this test is done in human beings. Okay. So whenever you are doing, we are doing a clinical trial on animals. So we have to make a protocol. Okay, we have to make the protocol. Then we have to submit this protocol to the animal ethics community. Okay, animal ethics committee. Once they receive this protocol, they'll look after it and then they'll give us the permission. Yes, you can go up with the trials with the animals. What are the animals that we use in general? We use rat, rabbit mice uh, then we have uh, dog animal uh, we have chimpanzee we have monkey we have many other animals we even sometimes we do in snakes so my, all these animals because we are more focused on uh, monkeys and chimpanzees because we, they relate more close to us okay so anything which is translated in chimpanzee or animal there's a high chance that this will also be same for the human beings okay that is the reason we want to do test in the animals so what are we actually watching in the animals we are watching for their life expectancy we are watching are they losing their weight they're gaining their weight are they eating are they sleep deprived is they affect in their sleep or their normal function is hampered their blood test have been done and seen is there any toxicity or is the liver functioning normal of an animal or a kidney and we sometimes do the autopsy of these animals to find out if there any gross changes in the body of the animal so we can get a rough idea so what is this drug actually going to do to human beings so once we complete with preclinical trials we come to clinical trial clinical trial as i told you is done in human beings so again we make a committee again we make a protocol this protocol is submitted to the human ethics committee okay we need to submit this in human ethics committee they give you the permission then again you need to take a permission from the good clinical practice this means that we are the reason we're making this drug is for betterment of the society we are not making this drug for bioterrorism or so this is not good clinical practice good clinical practice means the drug the things we're making is for betterment it's not for harming anybody once we get this then we have to register with the a medical council of the specific country okay once we do that again we have to get a certification from the drug controller of that country so after this only we can start with the phase one phase two phase three and phase four but nowadays a new phase has been added that is phase zero is also added now phase zero means phase zero means um, it is also known as micro dosing that means if you need to give a dose of 100 mg we will be giving just 1 mg okay so we are divide we are giving just 100 of that dose okay so we are reducing the side effect we are reducing the chances of adverse effect because this drug is very new and we don't know what kind of drug and what kind of reaction is this drug going to do to our human body that is the reason we are minimizing the dose to a very good extent okay Along with this, we also put a radio ligand. Now, what is a radio ligand? That means we are putting a radio dye, okay? That dye will be visible whenever we do an X-ray or a CT scan or an MRI scan. Whenever we do any radiological imaging, we will be able to identify where is that drug present in our body, okay? It is very, very important because some drugs are being thrown out by your feces, some are thrown by your kidneys, some drugs are thrown out by your liver. Because we need to know this because if somebody is having liver failure and if you give a normal dose, we need to give less than normal because his liver is not functioning. So that is the reason we need to find out how it has been thrown out from the body or is that drug getting accumulated in the body because there are some drugs that will get accumulated in your nails, in your skin, in your bone, in your eyes. So we need to find out and how we can find out if we put a dye. It's kind of like an address we're putting onto the drug because 
if we don't put a radio like and we can't trace the drug where is the drug it can be anywhere in the body okay that's the reason we're putting a radio like again once we do it now we will uh, come to now we will once we do it we'll come to the phase one clinical trial phase one clinical trial in this trial we are mainly focusing on knowing about the toxicity and the safety of the drug okay along with this we are trying to find out the maximum tolerance dose and we are doing pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics now what is pharmacodynamic means what the drug is doing action to the human body whereas pharmacokinetic means what the human body is doing to the drug because drugs we are taking in our human body to do some therapeutic effect it is pharmacodynamics pharmacokinetic means the drug is a foreign body our body will never want to keep any foreign body in our body okay it will try to throw out so what our body is doing it is trying to throw out the drug from our body this is known as pharmacokinetics okay in phase one we take around 20 to 100 healthy individual people and we also have a placebo control we take a control that is we try to rule out is the drug actually working or the drug is actually working due to a placebo effect okay so once we continue this with phase one now we go to phase two of clinical trial in phase two clinical trial we are mainly trying to focus the therapeutic exploration we are trying to find out the therapeutic exploration what is the drug actually used for is it actually working it's not working we are trying to find out the dose the range what is the range of dose what is the safety and what is the efficacy and how effective is the drug okay in phase two clinical trial we require from one year to three years okay one to three years and in phase two clinical trial is a maximum drug failure rate that is a maximum amount of drugs are rejected in phase two clinical trial once phase two clinical trial is done we shift to phase three clinical trial in phase three clinical trial we see therapeutic confirmation of the trial okay we are uh, confirming the therapeutic trial so again here also we see for the safety and efficacy and in this we need three to five years and what is the number of people we use in phase three we use around 500 to 3000 normal healthy individual in phase three after this phase three is done now we are going to register this drug under fda okay food and drug uh, administration we uh, we register it under fda now once fda gives us permission now we can do the marketing of this drug now in phase four now we come to phase four in phase four we try to find out the adverse effect in phase four is also known as post surveillance uh, post marketing surveillance strategy okay that is after the uh, drug has been released in the market we're still doing some surveillance uh, against that drug okay in phase four we're actually trying to find out the adverse drug reaction or we're trying to find out some new aspect of the drug that means if a drug is being produced for a certain disease we are trying to find out that this drug can be also used in any other disease or not that is known as new aspect of the disease Along with this, we are trying to find out the new route, what are the other routes we can give, either we can give by intravenous, we can give by inhalation, or we can give by dermal patch, or can give injection, any different types of route. Along with this also, we are trying to find out again the dose, okay, what are the range of dose again, and formulation. Formulation means in what other drugs can I mix this drug, okay, what other drugs I can mix this drug to give, rather giving two drugs at the same time giving two drugs separately we are giving just one drug at the same time so this is phase four clinical trial so as you can see in phase two we are taking around one two three years phase three we are taking three to five years and this coronavirus pandemic first emerged in wuhan china in december 2019 but now this is september 2020 so it's not very sure that we will be having this vaccine very soon because it has to go through these clinical trials. Okay, it takes you one to three years just in phase two and three, three to five in first phase three. So it will take it will take another one two years or maybe more for this vaccine to be developed. At the same time, I want to make you very clear because this virus is very new. Every day we are knowing about this virus, something new about this virus. Initially, we thought this virus will not spread to human beings. Now we knew it, it is spread to human beings. Then we knew 
from human beings to human beings it will not spread now we know yes it is spreading from one person to another we thought that the domestic animals will not transmit the virus now we know yes it can transmit by an indirect route that means if somebody is having coronavirus infection if he coughs or sneezes and that he sneezes very near to the animal to the dog and that uh, virus can go and land up into their body skin okay and when you pat your dog or when you play with your dog you don't wash your hands you touch your nose you touch your mucous membrane you touch your mouth it can enter that's an indirect source okay once again now we find out with the news uh, research that this virus can also be spread due to sexual route now a very recent studies are showing that there is also re-emerging of this case that means a person is infected again he's getting infected is not reinfection of the same person is taking place by coronavirus pandemic okay so as of now everything is new everything what information we knew yesterday might not be correct tomorrow so we have to keep on in updating so you can talk to your doctor talk to your healthcare professional with their very very good official website go to the WHO website or you can use the CDC website so those are very highly professional website which you can trust okay you don't need to trust just one website you can use multiple website you know one website a website may be wrong but multiple website these are all very highly reputed website so this won't be wrong okay so you can trust that you can talk to your doctors and for the timing the vaccine has been produced maintain social distancing or you can maintain your uh, some good hand hygiene wear a mask wherever you can and if you are having the symptoms let's say you are having fever or you are having uh, difficult cough you are having productive cough you are having dry cough you are having body pain you might be having uh, diarrhea so this might suggest that you are having coronavirus infection okay so uh, let me tell you around 20 percent uh, 80 percent of the people who are infected with coronavirus will not require any medical treatment the remaining 20 percent yes they will require some medical treatment out of the 15 percent will require just mild moderate uh, medical treatment whereas the five percent remaining will require a severe medical treatment that is icu bedding okay so that's what we can identify yes uh, as of now the vaccine is not so what we can do this time is maintain the social distancing maintain a good hand hygiene and try to maintain a good immune system you can never boost it's a very big myth that you can boost the immune system you can never boost the immune system let's say if i say you can boost your immune system it is in one way it's like say you're having autoimmune disease your immune system is so high fire that it is actually attacking your own cell what you can do is that you can make this immune system work in an optimal level due to our stressful life our we are not sleeping properly we are having sleep deprivation we are like taking a lot of stress studies have shown that when if you are not sleeping properly or taking a lot of stress your actually immune system drops your neutrophils actually drops your wbc drops so the best thing you can do is that try to maintain the immune system in the optimal level sleep adequately try to maintain uh, manage your stress and try to eat good amount of vegetable fruits and vegetables do some physical exercises um, have some multivitamins uh, vitamin c yes they can help you it's not going to boost okay it will help you to work in the optimal level yes and the people who are having diabetes mellitus or hypertension or the age of 60 years or more having coronary artery disease or who are obese okay whose bma is 25 or more or 30 or more these people are at the higher risk of complication that were developing complication due to coronavirus so that is the thing that you should watch out and as of now go and see the official website and that's all for this video if you have some suggestion or some questions you may leave down in the comment section vaccine there's a lot of time for this vaccine to come till then use your social distancing and good hand hygiene that's all for now and thank you bye bye take care